Hi guys, it's Laura from We Chef. Um, we're gonna cook a frittata today. So um, let's get to it. Again, I'm trying to pick recipes that hopefully you have ingredients in your refrigerator already for and don't have to head out to the bare shelf grocery store. So this frittata I'm calling the let's clean up the refrigerator frittata. So that's exactly what I did this morning before I came over here to We Chef to film these videos. Um, so a frittata is kind of like uh, an omelet with the veggies, cheese, whatever you want to put in there um, cooked into it, okay? Um, so this morning I found some manchego cheese. I had some mushrooms that I already sliced up. Um, I found some zucchini an onion and some sour cream and some eggs. So that's what we're gonna make our frittata out of. So, you know, think, um, you know, you can use meats, you can use bacon, you can use ham, you can use sausage, you can use cheese, Parmesan, cheddar, um, fontina, you know, any kind, pretty much any kind of cheese you have in your fridge and then whatever veggies you have in your fridge as well, okay? Certainly some things go better together than others, but, um, but yeah, and again, challenge your kids to help you come up with ideas. Look in the refrigerator together, think about flavor combinations together and what would be best. So, we're gonna start by cutting some onion. What I like to do with the kids is, I have this onion prep, the skin's off already, I've cut it in half. What I like to do for my kids to have them cut onion because um, they're not gonna be able to cut the whole onion. It's gonna be for my little kids, it's gonna be too much. So what I like to do is get like what I call a little rainbow, a rainbow of onion, okay? And I take that rainbow of onion and we're gonna cut around the rainbow of onion, cutting little pieces, following the curve of that onion rainbow. Now, as soon as you have cut the amount of onion you want, um, and again, we're using these Curious Chef knives, um, that you can purchase off of Amazon um, so you can get them sent to your home. Um, I do not get any money from Curious Chef. I just think it's a really fantastic product to get kids started on knife skills, okay? Um, so um, I highly, highly recommend it. It is serrated. It's, as of yet, I've been open for three years. Um, hopefully, um, nobody has hurt, cut themselves with it. So it is a really, really good product. So we have our onion gonna set those remaining onion aside. Now I'd like a little garlic, forgot to tell you, I found garlic at home too. So what I like to do, again, for my kids, um, oh, but what, I'm gonna move back, sorry. Have your kids wash their hands as soon as they've cut the onions. A lot of kids complain about the, um, the onions hurting their eyes and then if they, we're not wanting them to touch their faces right now anyway, so they then touch their eyes with their little onion filled, onion juice hands, um, they're not gonna be happy. So as soon as you cut onions, if they're willing to cut those with you, head to the sink and get those little paws washed, okay? So then, for our garlic, I'm gonna smash my garlic, just a little bit, just so I hear, I'm gonna press that with that knife, just so I hear like a little pop, and then the kids really like to peel off that, that paper outside to the garlic, okay? So let them peel that paper outside off. Then, where the garlic was attached to our, to the, um, to the bowl, when that little clove of, where that little clove of garlic was attached to the bowl, you're gonna cut that little end up. And then with them, just cut the smallest piece you can. You know, we gotta keep expectations in check when we're cooking with kids. These are not gonna be fine cuts that we're gonna see at nice restaurants, right? We're gonna get these as small as we can, let them help them cut these as small as we can. And then if you need to go back and do a small little chop, do a small little chop, but really also just as good as they can do is going to be great and they're going to be involved and they're going to be so proud of themselves for what they have accomplished, okay? So just some nice relatively small pieces of garlic. Then we, are, we have some zucchini. I'm going to keep chopping with this knife because I want, even though I have a real knife here, because I want you to see it can be done. There are certain like harder things, like raw potato. You would have to make like sticks of potato for them to cut the potato. Potato can certainly go into this frittata as well. But things that are a little bit harder, you need to make
make smaller pieces of that product for them to be able to chop it. Otherwise, it's just it's too difficult. They can't get themselves through a whole a whole piece of um, piece of a whole potato. So again, with these kids' knives, I need to saw. You don't just want to press through. So I'm just going to cut a couple slices of zucchini, and then I'm going to cut those into nice little bite-sized quarters. So and let's get those done. Okay, then I have my mushrooms already cut, so we're going to set those veggies aside. Um, let's get our, um, we're going to get our manchego grated. So it all depends. Um, so I do also let kids grate here. You do have to be careful. I think this is, this and peelers are the place that um, kids get injured the most, okay? So we're going to take um, our manchego. You can um, do this directly onto the counter. If you want bigger pieces, you can use this bigger grate. If you want smaller pieces, you can use this finer. Always keep kids away from this with the, that is used for harder cheeses where the, um, it's, the grate is pushed outwards um, and because they can cut themselves. So we always want to hold firmly onto the top of our grater. And then with your child, if they're a little bit older, seven, eight or above, they can do this themselves. Some five-year-olds, from five and six-year-olds are good on their own. But we always want to keep our hands as far back on our cheese as we can. I'm going to actually do a finer grate. And we're going to gently push our cheese down the grater. Another thing I encourage kids not to do is, you know, they see chefs on TV and they're so fast and they're like, ah, grating the cheese. Well, we don't need to do that. We are not on a cooking challenge show. We, to help prevent injury, if we just slowly use our muscles and push that cheese down our grater, we are going to be happier in the end, even if it takes us a little longer, okay? So I have a nice little pile of cheese, um, and that is good. I'm gonna put that in a little bowl. And set that to the side as well. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our egg mixture together. This is gonna be more of a individual slash two person frittata. You can absolutely, I'm just using um, an eight inch saute pan, is that eight inches, six, eight inch saute pan. Um, you can make it in a larger saute pan and then um, cut slices of it. That's a very common thing to do. We're doing the individual methods. So again, I love kids to learn how to crack an egg. It's a very important kitchen skill. So again, we're gonna hit the egg firmly against the side of the table, put our fingers into that um, crack in the eggshell that we created, or sorry, not our fingers, specifically, specifically we are going to put our thumbs into that crack we've created. And then we're going to put, pull our thumbs away from each other gently, okay? What we want to encourage the kids not to do is jab their thumbs into the egg, okay? And also not crush the egg. So again, thumbs into that crack, and then pull our thumbs away from each other. Huh, this guy's misbehaving. Pull our thumbs away from each other gently. Okay, let me go rinse off my hands. You could add some milk. You could add a little cream. I'm going to actually add some sour cream. If you have sour cream or crumb fresh in your fridge, um, we're gonna add to these three eggs two tablespoons of sour cream and that's just gonna give it some good flavor, okay? And if it's not coming out of the tablespoon on its own, I always say, you're the boss, make it come out, okay? Make it come out of there. So, there we go, we have our sour cream in there. And if you don't have milk, if you don't have cream, if you don't have sour cream, the eggs will be just fine on their own, okay? So then, we need some salt, so two finger, Pinch of salt. We don't want the kids going in there with multiple fingers. We want a two finger pinch of salt. I always say two fingers like an alligator pinch of salt. Then we're gonna take our peppers and we're gonna do a nice couple grinds of fresh ground pepper, okay? Then we grab our whisk and we give that a nice, a nice stir. 
get that sour cream. The sour cream is going to not mix in there perfectly at first, but really give it a good foldable with your non-dominant hand, so the hand you don't use to write, and then hold. Use the whisk with your other hand and give that a good mix. Then we are going to add our cheese. And I'm going to just mix that in there gently with my spatula. Okay? Nothing is changing. We want all of our eggs broken down. We don't want to see any clumps of white in there. We want, we don't want to see any big chunks of um, sour cream. Now we're going to get our, our pan heating on the induction stove or whatever your cooktop is. This um, is a little bit faster for us and faster for me here. And I really like induction with the kids because there's no open flame. So that just makes me feel a little bit safer with them. So we're gonna get this, let this get hot. You need to be patient here. This is always a nice challenge with the kids uh, waiting for things to heat up. We're gonna add a couple tablespoons of olive oil to this. We want the bottom of our pan coated nicely with olive oil. We might, after cooking our veggies, even I'm gonna twirl that around, get the bottom of our pan nicely coated. Um, we might even add a little bit more olive oil before we add our eggs. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to cook our vegetables. So, just um, like if you watched my first video with pancakes, we're looking for a couple of things with our olive oil. We want to use our senses. We are waiting to be able to smell the olive oil in the air. I want to see um, the surface of the olive oil kind of starts to, I don't know what the right word is, rumble or get these little tiny vibrations almost when it's hot. Um, but mostly for the olive oil, I'm, I can smell that it's, it's coming along. And then um, when we put in our veggies, we can also check, because when we put in our veggies, we want to hear it sizzle. So I just put in a little onion. It's not sizzling yet. There are a couple little bubbles around it, but I want it to be a little bit more intense before I add everything else. So we want to hear sizzling. So we're smelling, we're looking with our eyes, and we're listening with our ears to see if this is hot enough. So that looks great. Yep, I have here a nice sizzle as those veggies went in. I put everything but my carrots, or but my carrots, what am I talking about? But my mushrooms, okay? So immediately I smell that garlic coming out, which smells fantastic. And we're gonna let those cook for a little bit. Um, I'm gonna turn my heat down a little bit now that it is going. And I want to make sure they're also not just in a pile in the middle, right? We want everything to cook. So if there's something on top of a big pile in, of vegetables in the middle, that's not going to get the heat that's needed for it to cook well. So we're just going to wait and let those cook for a little bit. Okay, so those have cooked for a couple minutes. Let's add our mushrooms now and let everything cook for a little bit longer. Okay, so I want to make sure that things are cooked well. Um, as you can see, I cleaned up as um, these were cooking. Um, it's very, very important to clean as you go. I am a big believer in that. When I was in culinary school, I feel like sometimes just as much as I learned how to cook well, I learned how to organize and clean well because it is an important part of being a good chef. So, these look pretty good to me. So, my mushrooms soaked up a bunch of my olive oil. I'm about to add my eggs to this mixture, okay? What I don't want to happen is for my eggs to all stick to the bottom of this pan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this another approximately tablespoon of olive oil. I'm gonna swirl that around the bottom. I wanna make sure my veggies are all spread out because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this egg mixture over the top 
and I'm gonna give this, make sure it's spread evenly. I'm gonna let this cook until I start seeing it just starting, just starting to set around the edges of it, and I'm gonna put it in the oven, okay? And then it's just gonna take maybe out, maybe about five or so minutes in the oven. Obviously, it kind of depends on what size frittata you are making. A bigger one is going to take longer than a smaller frittata. Um, all these recipes will be posted on my website. Um, I'll create a new page for online cooking class recipes and links to these recipes. Um, so if you don't catch all the ingredients while we're cooking, please don't worry about that and just check uh, wechefchicago.com. So this is setting up around the edge, so I'm gonna put this guy in the oven. We're just gonna leave him there. The oven's at 375 degrees. Okay guys, this is what we wanna see when it comes out of the oven. We want to see a nice golden brown color. We're gonna kind of take our spatula around the outside to help get it out of the pan well. Yep, this guy will come out. And bring him out of the pan. And there you have it when you scoop that back up there. Okay, and you know, you could dress this with a little mixture of some greens and a little light vinaigrette. Um, some potatoes on the side, some little roasted potatoes would be great. If you happen to have be growing fresh herbs in your house by some, because you're really awesome, that would be great too. Um, but really this will be delicious just like this, okay? So um, thank you for being with me and um, I hope you guys enjoy this recipe. And please don't hesitate to email me at info at wechefchicago.com with any of your questions. Take care, I look forward to seeing you um, next video.